Happy fall, everyone. Welcome. And today we have a very special guest speaker with us here today from the mortgage industry. As many of you have been asking tons of questions with the new mortgage rate hikes that have been going on and all the uncertainty in the market, we thought we would bring on a specialist in the mortgage industry to help answer all your questions. So welcome, today we have Mrs. Amrita Bogle here from Mortgage Intelligence. Welcome, Amrita. Thank you so much, Pooja. So Amrita's background, she has over four years of experience in the mortgage industry, and she actually has a university degree, a university business degree in banking and finance, and over 10 years of experience in the corporate finance world. So she comes with a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, and she can answer all these questions to do with what's happening with the mortgage um, industry. And she also she actually specializes in three areas, um, which are the main questions we usually get questions from is one is first time buyers. Um, she also specializes in refinances, as well as investment properties. So without further ado, let's get right into it, Amrita. We're gonna go into asking you actually a little bit about what currently is the rate and then get into the next questions um, moving forward. So what is the rate that we're at right now? Okay, so uh, firstly, thank you so much, Pooja, for such a warm welcome. So let's talk about today's interest rate. So today's uh, Bank of Canada's prime rate is at five and a quarter percent, so 5.25. So when we talk about variable rates, they are dependent on the Bank of Canada's prime rate. So today, variable rates are just shy of 5%. However, when we talk about fixed rates, we're very close to five and a half percent. So today, when we're talking about rates, they're in the range of 5%. Fixed rates are at about 5.5%. Okay, and compared to during COVID time, what were the rates that time? Yeah, yeah. so when we COVID talk period? about, you know, compared to COVID times, you know, during COVID, we also rates of as low as 1.5%. I actually have clients who have 1% rates as well. So when we really put that into perspective, today's rates are almost 3 to 4% higher than what we had during COVID. Yes, I agree. But you, you know, know what? what? It's still, I still still feel that they're not super high if we compare them to the 80s, right? But yeah, in your experience now, what is to come? What is to come in the future? What can people expect our rates to kind of go up? Yeah, so that's exactly what I was getting to. What we saw during COVID was really due to an abnormal activity. That's not normal, right? I don't think in Canadian history we ever saw such low interest rates. So what we saw during COVID was you know, an abnormal and the rates were extremely low. Wow. So if you're asking me, Pooja, what can we expect? Is, uh, look, we still have two more announcements by Bank of Canada before the end of the year. One would be towards end of October and one will be in December. Mm -hmm. So look, I can, I'm going to start by saying, Pooja, nobody has a magic ball to say, I'm sure or I'm very certain or rates are going to go up by 1% or 2%. But based on analysis, I think end of October, we can expect another half a percent increase and maybe in December, a quarter point increase. Okay. So which means that would bring our, uh, our prime rate at almost 6.2%. Okay? okay. Pujai, what I do want to say is at that stage when after the December rate hike, if it happens after that, I don't think we will see any further increases. And why is that? Why are we not why expecting? Because let's go back to what's causing these interest rate hikes. Yeah, that was gonna bring me up to my second question. What is actually causing these rate hikes, right? We all know inflation mainly. Yes, yeah, like if Pooja, you went groceries for the same basket to Loblaw last year and took that same basket today, you're paying a lot more. The rates Absolutely, of everything yeah. and, and why is that? That's because it's inflation. Inflation is at its highest. So our inflation was at 8.1%. What the Bank of Canada and the government says, we don't want this inflation rate to be entrenched into our economy. We're like in the 90s where they have to put a wage freeze or they have to put a price freeze. Remember, it's, we don't want that. Yeah. So what Bank of Canada is saying, we want to combat this high inflation rate. On a positive note with all this aggressive rate hikes, Pooja, today our inflation rate is at 7%. 
So it has already dropped by 1.1%. Right. So it means this rate increases are helping combat inflation. Right. Okay. So now coming back to, sorry, your question that what can we expect going forward or, you know, what is going to happen with all these rate hikes? Remember, Pooja, we still haven't seen the full impact. Remember, it's still filtering through the economy. We don't know the full impact of all of these rate hikes. Yes, we know it's working, but have we seen the full impact? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So based on analysis, what I think is after the December increase, Bank of Canada will take a pause, let it filter out. Let's see what the impact is of all these rate hikes. And at that stage, they will further decide. But should everything stay as normal as usual, say there's no more geopolitical wars and everything is as it is today, we can expect our interest rates to start dropping by mid next year to fall next year. Really? Okay. You should definitely be able to see that. But Pooja, I just want to add the last thing is, I don't want anybody to think, oh, our rates will come back to what they were during COVID. Right. No, we will not. The rates will come back to what Bank of Canada calls the, the neutral rate, where the Bank of Canada's neutral rate is around three and a quarter percent. So Pooja, like you have a lot of history in this, uh, in this uh, industry. Rates should go back to what we had before COVID at about four, four and a half percent, whatever we were seeing before. Right. As soon as they basically combat inflation and things go a little bit back to normal, right? Yes. Yes. That's good. Well, then the other question that we always get right now is now, is this the time to buy, right? Whether it be somebody buying as a first time home buyer or somebody buying as an investment property or their primary residence, um, would you suggest from a mortgage perspective, yes. is this a good time to buy? Yeah. So Pooja, how will I will answer this question is in the last few weeks, the number of purchase and sale agreements that are coming through our office are quite high, but they're in the range of about 700,000 to less than a million. And you're probably wondering why they're less than a million is because generally, whether you're a first time home buyer or an investor, the minute you buy a house for a million and above, you have to put 20% down. Mm -hmm. So let's put this into perspective. In the range, let's say today, client buys a home for 750,000, putting 50,000 down, we're looking for a mortgage about 700,000. Mm -hmm. With the rate hike of about 3% is what we've seen in the last few weeks, which is 300 basis points. That actually equalizes to about annually in interest payments of about 20,000. Now, let's say that our rates don't change for two years. That equals to 40,000. Now, Pooja, I'm sure you will agree with me. The same house that the client has bought today for 750. Five months ago, this house would be in the range of about 925 to 950. Am I right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, because that is what we've seen a correction in the market of prices to the housing market. Right. So, even if you, you've almost saved almost close to 200,000, and even if you've paid 40,000 high due to the higher cost of borrowing, the net of that, you are still saving $100,000, right. $150,000. So coming back to your question, is it a good time to buy? I would say absolutely yes. As long as you have a steady state of income, you have strong financial stability, not where you have a monthly payment of a car loan of about 1300 1400 your line of credit is maxed out and you have lots of credit card debt if you have none of that you have good strong financial stability you have good sources of income that are stable then absolutely it is a good time to buy yeah no i absolutely agree with that and that's what we've been telling our investors and our buyers you won't actually get an opportunity like this in the next few months if you are in the market to buy this is the best time because A, you don't have too much competition. B, right. the rates are still pretty attractive, right? And C, the pricing is a lot lower than what it used to be, or it's actually stabilized, right? Some, some homes, for instance, I tell people that might not have even come to market before, might have had 20 multiple offers, are right. now available for you to purchase, which is an opportunity on its own right so and now with the whole mortgage um, explanation that you gave it completely makes sense to be in the buying shoes right now 
Um, you mentioned a little bit about down payments that you have a higher down payments that you have to make if you buy a property over a million dollars. If we can get a little bit more into down payment questions, because I have a lot of first time buyers sometimes asking me, um, do we still get the 5% incentive and when does that apply till? And then we also have a lot of investors asking, is it still 20% down or is it 35% down now, right? Okay. So a lot of the percentages have changed. So if we can shed yeah. some light on that, please. Absolutely. So let's talk about first time home buyers. Okay. So as long as you're a first time home buyer and you are buying your primary residence, meaning an owner occupied where you will live, and the purchase price is less than a million, you do not have to put 20% down. So how does it work, Pooja? So let's take an example. We are buying a house for $800,000. Mm -hmm. What the bank is saying, the first 500,000, you have to put 5%, which is 25,000. And the next 300,000 will be 10%, which is 30,000. So the bank requires a minimum down payment of $55,000 on a property of 800,000. Mm -hmm. as long as your income qualifies that but that is the minimum down payment requirement for a property less than a million first 500,000 is five percent anything above 500 less than a million is ten percent okay, okay? now anytime you're buying a property for over a million the minimum down requirement down payment requirement is 20 percent could you look Today, we see houses of 2 million, 2.5 million, 2.7 million. In that, in when it, we come across those kind of prices, then we come down to sliding scale, okay? Where it gets a little complicated and every bank has a different criteria. But just to put it into perspective, they might say, okay, the first 1.5 million, you can pay 20% down. Anything above the 1.5, you have to put 50% down. So when you really put it into perspective, it ends up being about 30 to 35%, but it all comes down to the actual purchase price in that range. But generally, anything above a million is 20% down. Okay. And lastly, when it comes to investment. Mm -hmm. Now, Pooja, you already have a home where you're living and you want to buy another home for investment purposes. The bank does require you to put 20% down on an investment property. Okay. But, but let's say today, Pooja, you have a home and there is more than 80% equity in that home. Let's say today the value is 800,000, you only owe about 300,000. Mm -hmm. And today, Pooja, your client is saying, you know what, Pooja, I'll rent out this small uh, condo of mine. And can you buy, help me buy a semi-detached? and the price of that semi-detached is 900 the client can still put minimum down payment on that 900 because firstly it's his owner occupied he will be living in that home and it is less than a million so he only needs to put down payment of sixty-five thousand as long as he qualifies so the bank says you're allowed to have one property with minimum down payment as long as it is your owner occupied property Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be your first property as long as it's your no, no. primary residence, right? Correct. Occupy. Yes. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Very good. Okay. And um, anything else for investors that they need to know for down payment? The only No, not for down payment. The only thing I will say for investors or, you know, uh, clients who are looking to buy pre-construction or who are really interested because today's a good time to buy. As I'm sure yeah. you can vouch to that is sometimes clients come to me and, and say, look, I have the first five, 10% I might have that I can struggle, I'll ramage through and get it. But what about the remaining? How do I, a good way to look at that is if you have equity in your home, tap into that equity and use it for the down payment. That is definitely an option. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So look at refinancing your home. When you're refinancing, if you even have other debts, we can consolidate all those debts. You can remove the equity to put down on your next property. So these are definitely avenues of how to build investment from one to two to three properties. Exactly. And we guide our investors to do the same thing. And I feel it's the best way to kind of hedge against inflation right now too, because your money sitting in the bank's not doing anything, right? Exactly. You can put it into pre-construction. It's one of the best investments you can make for sure. Yep. Yeah, absolutely agree. 
Okay, great. Well, for our last question, um, and I'm sure you get this all the time, is Rita, I've got a mortgage right now. Do I switch from variable to fixed? Yeah. So this is a very, very tri tricky question. But what I will say is, put it like how we've discussed through this conversation, right? We know our rates will not remain high forever. Okay. So let's say they remain at the rate they are today or the rate we expect by end of the year. Say they remain like that for another year. What your clients and all the listeners have to think is what is my total cost of borrowing over the term of my mortgage? A general term of the mortgage is five years. So let's say today you had a, you have a variable rate, which was at about one and a half percent during COVID. And now it's obviously with all the rate hikes, it's very close to four to five percent. Right. And you have three more years left before the term is over. You come to me, Amrita, should my client go fixed? My answer would be no, because do you really want to pay the five and a half percent fixed rate for the next three years? If, you know, based on what we're seeing that rates should start going down in a year, you know, in eight to nine months time, why? Look at your total cost of borrowing. You've enjoyed one and a half percent for a year, year and a half. Fine. Now it's the it's at its peak, but they will come slightly down. So look at the total cost of the five years. But if you have clients, Pooja, who are very whose risk tolerance is in there, and they're saying, "No, Pooja, I really, really, I cannot take all these rate hikes. It makes me nervous." For such clients, I will say, then go for a shorter term of fixed rates, maybe one to two years. That is what I would suggest. And that's a good option, right? That way they don't have to wait the full five years for a fix. They can yep. do the one to two year short term, yep. see what happens in the market in the next couple of years. And if it rates do start adjusting going lower, they can easily switch back to the variable. Yeah. Which I can I just add one more thing to that? Yes, yeah, of course. If you ask me, Amira, but why can't they just go five years fixed and then why don't they just switch after two years? Remember, if you're on variable rate, you can switch to fix any time. Right. But if you're fixed, you cannot switch to variable without paying a penalty. Right. And a fixed rate penalty can be substantial based on the interest rate differential. So that is the main reason I suggest go for shorter term fixed. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Because some people don't realize there's going to be a major penalty. And then sometimes the savings just don't even justify. It just penalty. doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Right. Okay, well, great. That was wonderful. You answered all the top five questions. I hope our viewers and our investors are more knowledgeable now with what's happening in the mortgage industry. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. As here at Caps Realty Group, we believe in knowledgeable agents, professional service. So we basically want to give you all the knowledge there is, black and white advice, for you to be fully equipped to make the best decisions in your real estate investments. And if you have any mortgage questions, do reach out to us and we can put you in touch with Ms. Amrita Bogle. Thank you so much, Amrita, for your time. And we look forward to working with you in the near future again. Thank you so much, Pujan. It'll be my pleasure to help you and your clients. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.